today. From Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Zane Gonzalez to week one of the NFL on EA Sports. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And here's a look at their leader, standing 6-4. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Oh, a good pick up there, a 22. But Charles, you think about the quarterback position in the National Football League. Look, I think we can agree you can't win without a good one. And this organization was sold on this young man from the very beginning. They certainly were. They loved what they saw from him in college. I think a lot of it was the ability to process quickly and make decisive decisions. Able to get rid of the football to the right targets, never ruffle. And it's a beautiful thing if you're that guy where you come in, you know, right away, you're the guy. This is your team. You acclimate as the season goes on. The flip side is everyone expects you to be great right out of the gate. I mean, you think about it, it's not always instant success. Kyler Murray last year, Cardinals go 5-10-1, and one, although some didn't expect them to do that well. But Sam Darnold the year before, Jets just 4-12, so it's not always roses from day one. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. He was taken down by Chandler Jones. A gain of four. It's now second and six. Second and six. 33-yard line. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 14. First a nice throw right there, Charles. And I want to get your thoughts on some comments of his that made the rounds on the Talking Head shows. He was asked what would mean more, playoff berth or Rookie of the Year award. He actually said Rookie of the Year. Are you surprised by that? Well, let's face it. You and I would probably come off the top rope with a big elbow when we hear that type of a comment because it sounds selfish, doesn't it? Yeah. Playoff berth is what you aspire to. But we have spent some time with this young man, and I think it just came off the wrong way. I think what he was trying to say is, Rookie of the year, which means I played well and my team, you know, was challenging or got a put. And across the chalk into the end zone, it's a 49er touchdown. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the 49ers drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. yesterday titled student of the game about this young quarterback and all the time that he spent in the film room getting ready for the season he said a lot of times he was the first one in and the last one out just getting some extra eyes on game film and what i loved is how they drew out of him how he got prepared because he really wanted to dive into the playbook but we all know that with the NFL rules and how things are, you can't spend all of your time at the facility in the offseason. So during OTAs and minicamp, he got the coaches to do, like, detailed videos for him about going through the entire playbook, and then he studied those in the offseason to get him ready for when he came back to camp and then on into the season now. I thought that was pretty impressive for a youngster. It also gets you instant respect from the veterans in the locker room, does it not? It certainly does because you're announcing to everyone without standing on top of the mountain that you're all in and you're ready to leave. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. 
And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. And a big 32-yard play on third. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. They'll run here with Coleman out of the gun. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Coleman, the ball carrier. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. A gain of five brings up second and second and five at the 30-yard line. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. He couldn't hang on third down. Incomplete. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. He's got his man, it's Kendrick Bourne. And they're gonna have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals 16. First catch of the new season for him, and he picks up the first. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Back to the running game with Mostert. And he takes us down to about the 12 for a gate of three. Mostert, the ball carrier. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take out extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Down to the six yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Yeah, he's got it. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Good. Well, I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to... And it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Now, Jordan Reed there to make the grab. And the 49ers have now taken the lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Robbie Gold to kick off for San Francisco. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And this will be a touchback. No return from Isabella. At their own 25 yards. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. Mostert, the ball carrier. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Second and five. The throw with the middle taken in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Samuel. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Jordan Hicks, third in the NFL in tackles a year ago, there to make the play. That was a pretty good job defensively to hold him to a two-yard run, but I've got to think this offensive line, they're asking their quarterback for a different type of a run, one that they rely on, one they have confidence in, one they feel like they can block. 25 yards that time. And Debo Samuel is another one of those young receivers that not only looks like a running back, but plays like one after the catch. And he had one of the best seasons among 2000. That is caught by the tight end Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. George Kittle there to make the grab. And the Niners are able to stretch their lead. So much of the 49ers' success last season was due to tight end George Kittle, the NFL's all-pro tight end in 2019. If you want to start a debate, ask the question, is he the best tight end in the game, or is it Kansas City's Travis Kelsey? Maybe they're 1A and 1B. In any event, Kittle had 107 catches last season, his second straight 1,000-yard season, and he's a threat anywhere on the field 
especially as you get closer to the goal line. And this will be a touchback. No return from Isabella. At their own 25-yard line. We remind you, lots more to come. Ted, it's Mostert. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the 49ers add six to their lead. When you talk about a battle being won in the trenches, that touchdown right there, a lot of credit to the offensive lineman. Yeah, when you watch them surge across the front, they really created great space for the runner to get in. Gold with the extra point, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Andy Isabella on the return. The Cardinals take over first and 10. So out now come the Cardinals. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Mostert to start the drive. And he'll get it across midfield and down into Cardinal territory. Mostert, the ball carrier. Tackle made there by Jordan Hicks. To the 49-yard line. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. A gain of two. The Niners on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third and four. And that will be incomplete. Intended for And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far. But on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. Kyle Shanahan's made the decision. They're going on fourth down. Back to throw here. And they're going to bring him down. Back across midfield at the 45. Devon Kanar. drive in the air. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. That catch good for only a couple. Second and eight coming up. Out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. Now the second down throw on target. Four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. And he takes it all the way down to the 15. A big play there on the catch and run. 54 yards. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use momentum to launch another one. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. He was unable to shake three there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. And he'll get seven yards from the 17 to the 10 before he's taken down. You've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. That's complete right around the eight. Third down pass. Complete to George Kittle. A short game that doesn't get on the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. 
They'll try it now with Mostert. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's first and goal after they rip off a solid chunk of yardage in the ground game on a risky fourth down call. They'll run with Mostert. And across the goal line, into the end zone, touchdown 49ers. Raheem Mostert, already his second touchdown here in this opening weekend. And the 49ers add on to their lead. It is good. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game... They'll throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. George Kittle, the Pro Bowl tight end, the intended receiver. But it'll be second down. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Debo Samuel was the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. He'll drop to throw. They're able to haul it in is Kittle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. George Kittle is easily one of the elite tight ends in the NFL. Back-to-back -back seasons of 88 and 85 catches. We just saw another one right there. Anytime he lines up on the field, you better treat him as a primary receiver and make sure you have a second guy in the vicinity to try and cover him. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. At the 50-yard line, Al Moster. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Here's second and eight. Over the middle, Kittle complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 27-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Seven-yard line. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the pass incomplete in the end zone, but contact and pass interference. And now where does the ball get placed? Yeah, at the one-yard line. One-yard line. They gave up excellent reels. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. Raheem Mostert as the first half is winding down. And the Niners are able to stretch their lead. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there, unable to do so. That makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. Bobby Gold to kick off for San Francisco. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Andy Isabella on the return.
Foster. Room here to run. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him. 15 big yards. What a breakout season where he most took half in 2019. And now he's got a chance to be the lead back for his team. In fact, he spent time in the offseason bulking up, trying to get stronger, to absorb the extra hits and be available for more snaps. He wants to be a guy who carries the ball from game one all the way through game 16 in the regular season. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Moster. He'll have a first down past the 40, and he'll take it to the 43-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Raheem Mostert averaged 5.6 yards per carry last year. That was second in the NFL. So it's safe to say that it paid off that he patterned his work ethic after his hero, Frank Gore, the former 49er. That's a guy who really shows you how to go out and get it done each and every day. Raheem Mostert patterned him and had a breakout season in 2019 with the 49ers. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Yard line. From the gun, it's a handoff to Coleman. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Ball carrier. He's brought in the first half. He was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Here's a second and seven. Open man is born. The Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Warren. That's a gain of three. The card's going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that is incomplete. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. Well, the drive started with the shadow of their own goalpost all the way back at the two. Pretty nice job of getting downfield and at least getting three. Agreed on that one. A real nice job because really their goal was to get out of the shadows of those goalposts and give themselves a little bit of room to help out their defense. Instead, they got three points out of it. The football going back over to Arizona now. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they... to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. He was brought down. At the now it's second and nine. One-yard gain brings up second and nine. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And he will score. Touchdown, Cardinals. Short throw, pick six right take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. That's good. I like the look that they just showed there. When you come out of a passing formation, spread things out a little bit, it makes it really hard to cover the middle of the field, doesn't it? Because you got to go out to the perimeter and cover those guys. Yep, exactly. Got some good blocking, too. Helped him pick up the first. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. 
So in the Cardinal territory now. It's first and 10 at the 49 yard line. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Isaiah Simmons. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense. Pick it up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Intended for and partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. Completes it to Samuel. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 24-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. They'll run right side with Mostert. He's got the first down inside the 10. And across the track, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. 24 yards. And the 49ers add six to their lead. And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it, but he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. And this will be a touchback, no return from Isabella. At their own 25-yard line. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now. Really. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Jabal is credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on his faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal at the 8-yard line. They go play action here on first down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. George Kittle, the receiver that he was looking for. But it'll be second and goal. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. And now third and goal following incompletions on first and second down. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> and in his 15th season, he's able to get this one to go. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. So it's three. Just keep that clock ticking. It's now second and six. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And his throw here is going to be incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well. And every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. 
Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Charles, your takeaways so far on this young quarterback's first NFL start. How many cliches should I go into right now? Well, well, we just get going. We'll see where we end up. Okay, sounds good. The game was not too big for him. The spotlight was not too bright. He got comfortable and acclimated early. I thought it was a very solid, good performance to start things off. In a lot of ways, I think he's ahead of the curve. Well, that was pretty good. I think you got five cliches in there. But the word that sticks out to me from what you said is comfort. The way that he commanded that huddle looked like a 10-year veteran to me. And remember, many college quarterbacks moving into the NFL have spent very little time in huddles. So it's a lost art, and they have to learn that at a later stage in development. Give him credit for putting the time and the work in in advance. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Now this throw caught left side. Yeah, he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. That'll go as a pickup of 32 on the catch and run. How about the rookie in his NFL debut? Looking sharp. It's first and 10. Again, he'll drop the throw. That's complete to his receiver, Pettis. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. That's another. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. First and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. It's caught by Coleman. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. as his guys continue to pour it on. I think all teams probably like seeing that schedule for the first time, looking at week one, oh good, we're at home. This is why you want to be home in week one. They're looking sharp. And I agree with you totally. That's what you want. But there carries a little extra pressure with that as well because you and I both know protecting the home field, winning your home games is paramount in this league. So you go into it, yeah, we want it, but now you actually have to go out and prove it. And two sides to that coin and looking like they're going to protect it here in this one. and nine one yard gain brings up second and nine they go back to the ground this time moster space to maneuver at the 40 and past the 40 before he's out of bounds that's good for a 40 well that's a carry they have to be satisfied with and throughout this game they've been satisfied with what he's given them whenever they've needed a big run a first down he's the guy they've turned to and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks they feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On the stop. Two yards on the carry Two there. It'll be second down. It's second and eight at the 44-yard line. On second down, Moster. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. 
And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll run with Coleman on first down. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be stopped up at the line of scrimmage with a flag down. Let's check on the call. You can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. We might want to take that course. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Winds up and lets. And at the seven yard line, the catch is made. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the seven. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now it looks like he'll throw here. The quick slant caught. And he takes his down to about the two before going out of bounds. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. From the two now, second and goal. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to George Kittle, it's tight end. But now it's third and goal. Big play coming here, it's third and goal. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Has to be a little bit of frustration there. Back-to-back -back incompletions. Receivers blanketed on both attempts, this time on third down. The kick by Gold is good. And their lead will swell up to 28. 65. So a dozen plays on that. So the victory here for San Francisco. And partner, I must say, good to see you again. Been too long. And it's good to have football back, isn't it? Didn't you see me in preseason? Weren't we together in preseason? Yeah, but preseason, you know, it's preseason. This is week one. Oh, you're trying to say real football. Yeah, real football. Not preseason football yeah. where we shake down the rosters and figure out who's going to play and maybe the starters don't play as much. Now it's the front line guys from the first whistle. Yeah, I tuned you out in the preseason. <laughs> but now I'm listening to you. So for the Niners, that'll be a happy locker room as they start the season 1-0. And they will hit the road next week to take on the New York Jets. Meanwhile, for Arizona, they go down to defeat here in the opener. And they will be back home next week for a date with Washington. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. The regular season was off to a hot start, and I was full of confidence when I stepped up to the podium. If the press wanted a quote, I was going to give them one to remember.
said my piece, gave them a good quote to run with too, and stepped away. But despite my answer, I knew the games ahead would determine if the hype was real or just hot air. I remember that day. I mean, the game plan flowed through you, but everyone has someone they can lean on. Which teammate helped you the most? The whole team respected his opinion. He was sort of the veteran voice of the team everyone looked up to. No matter how things went, I knew I could count on him. <laughs> 